Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I'm Amabel. And welcome back to Disco Elysium, where today I believe we are starting with the thoroughly enviable task of performing a field autopsy on a week old dead body. Yes. Well, first we're going to talk to this little to Kuno. Oh, okay. You for, for, somehow I've got, I've got, I've got within within the first minutes. Somehow you found swear. somehow you found something worse to do. Okay, <laughs> listen. Go ahead. You're driving. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. My plan is to talk to this kid. Just subject us uh, all to this. Do the autopsy, and then I need to find money. <laughs> you are. Right? Uh, yeah, you are a I'm, little short on. I'm, I run out of time on that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back after this and ask. It is nearly seven p.m. And I'm gonna ask the lady for money. And you have not three real, in no small part because you spent a bunch of the real you did have on drugs. That was important. Um, <laughs> I'm so not that arguing with you. I'm just today. saying. So let's we'll start with this. All right. Maybe Kuno has some money. Fuck does Kuno care? He, the boy turns to you. He doesn't care. Uh, I talked to Manana. Manana. Sweetie. <laughs> Manana. 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 About nope. the armor. All right. It's fine. So? He raises his eyebrows, projecting aggressive indifference. Okay. Tommy promised to stick the pigs on him. He said the thank you was to King Chase down that armor anyway. He said you're now the king of the entire jam. Okay. So which... Ah... Uh... Do I want to play into this kid's self-aggrandizement? Yeah, I don't know. Do you think they're? Do you think valuables lie that way? I mean, I don't know if valuables lie either of these. I, I don't know. I still don't have a read on like how to connect with this kid. And granted, I'm doing it through the guise of a cop with a crowbar. So like, I feel like you know, it's not likely to get anything from him. But I'm I'm going to start with asking about that. He said you're now the king of the entire Jamrock. Uh, North Jamrock. Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south. Doesn't fuck with the madre. Kuno said your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Ah... Uh... You did, yeah, you did boot that check, and you have not done anything to open it back up. Okay. Yet. Okay, I'm off. Doesn't fucking care. Oh no, wait, I can Does go. Does Kuno care? Oh no, so I don't even have that available anymore. That that whole line of questioning. What line of okay. questioning? Doesn't fucking care. Well, because it started with I talked to the guy about the um, yeah, I mean, about the armor. That's no longer a dialogue option, so I can't yeah, go. Yeah, and... you already talked to him about it. Come on. All right. Let's take care of this. We'll the rotten right man on. lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. The belt is still around his neck. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Uh, first, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. <laughs> well, see, Kim, that's the thing. Uh, actually, it appears I have forgotten what a field autopsy is. Fine. It's a three-part form to be filled out on the scene by the detectives responsible. One takes notes, the other dictates. The goal is to establish cause of death. Do we need a scalpel for it? A scalpel is not always required. I hope this is one of those cases. Latex gloves are, however. Do I have... 
Um, yeah, you have the other pair of gloves on right now, though. Okay, hang on. Let me... Okay, I can't get into my... Okay. Yeah, let's get back to this later. I hope we do. It's getting really late for another... Now let me change my gloves. You put on these these slick fingerless gloves, uh, but they're probably exactly the wrong tool for this situation. Yeah, these are probably fine. Wait. You're not... Okay. Sweetie. What? You, you're not dropping the gloves on the... You, you, the, the point where your cursor is, is the... Yeah. Okay, I see it now. Okay. I am still getting used to these <laughs> new Bengal computer games. The rotting man lies on his... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Okay, so I'll ask again. Officer, you know what a field of Dubsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. <laughs> All right. I'll ask you when I need you to. For the most part, maybe I should handle the contact and you take notes. Okay, where should I take these notes? In your paperwork, officer. Just fill out the field autopsy form. He sighs, already expecting the answer. You're not going to believe this. I think I've lost my paperwork. Now they only have one paperwork, too. <laughs> Officer, what haven't you lost? Okay, d fucking dude, look. Nobody's more upset about this than I am, all right? Okay, the, the best answer, of course, is my left shoe. I don't know where the right one is, though. I've noticed that, yes. And I must say, I find it troubling. He looks at his notebook and sighs. I can give you my paperwork. There's an autopsy form there. Several, actually. But only if it helps move things along. Let's work off yours for now. Or no, you know, I'm... I'm sorry I lost everything. No, wait, if I apologize... Yeah. Is, is is the apology more about me or about him? Is it more the, the self-pitying, oh, I'm such a screw-up thing, or is it me being genuine? I can't really read it, you know, from from this. <clears throat> Will an apology, would an apology be useful right now? It's a great question. Let's work off yours for now. I feel if I keep apologizing, you just get more upset. Right. The autopsy form is near the end. Have you been apologizing? I thought so. Oh, you have. You have created a sneaky little opportunity here, haven't you? <sighs> mm. This may not be why you did it, but now, now that you have the opportunity, okay, well, can yeah, you I'm resist? Gonna, I'm, I'm going to be sneaky. Uh, my anticipation is that I'm going to read something very unflattering about myself here. It's just going to be a crude drawing of you with stink lines coming off of you. Mm-hmm. You find a moment as the lieutenant inspects the dead man's fingernails. Just a few glances. The pages are filled with a bulky free hand that's nearly illegible. Yeah, I'm going to do the second one. So uh, searching, searching for, for something, something about, about yourself. Me. Yeah. Odd. There doesn't seem to be much about you in his notes, as if you aren't the sun around which the world <laughs> revolves. Could it be that the case is not about you? Well, no, I know that. I know. I know that, but. Okay, I'll try to understand what those guys have written about the case at hand. It's very hard to draw conclusions. All you can make out is that he is in a hurry to solve the case. The tempo of the handwriting says as much, and that there are a lot of notes in there. Most of them are made prior to arriving at the scene in preparation. Oh, so here it is. What? Uh, open the notebook, add the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists. 
describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with. Okay, I'll begin with one assistant. That's you. Apparently, I'm writing Harry Dubois. I I don't like this. Dubois. Du, Dubois. I don't. I'm not a. I should know that too. I I work with people with that last name. I mean, uh, you are allowed to leave it empty. No. Uh, no. Well, what is it? What me. is it that you don't like about it? Uh well, I mean the. The, the way the character responded to the name made me feel like he didn't feel comfortable. It didn't fit him. Yeah, I you think know? he feels pretty uncomfortable with a lot of things about his life. That would be my uh, my takeaway yeah. from a lot of what we've seen so far. That's true. I I'm going to write it because Kim is looking at me. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Two coroner's case number KK five seven dash O eight O three dot O eight one five. Okay, I'll write write it down. Next name. We've heard the nom de guerre, Lely. It's better than nothing. Write it down. Uh, Lely nom de guerre. What's next? Uh, date of birth. Date of birth. And I, I nod. Any. Age? Hmm. Roughly 50. Uh, right. Uh, equivalent to, equal to, roughly 50. I do like, I have not seen the squiggly equal sign in so many years, so that's so good. <laughs> the corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Oof. The, the 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 writing in this I know we keep saying this, but just the way it just like turns the stomach is just it's so evocative. Teeming with opportunistic microorganisms, letting out a foul smelling diamine compound. Your eyes turn watery. Race Mondial. Okay, write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. <laughs> The little monster exclaims energetically. Mail. <laughs> Pigs could have sex. I like the way that, like, if you if you <laughs> yourself have a thought, if you're like, haha, yes, please, or whatever, like, the fact that Kuno S says something out loud just immediately shames you. It's like, oh God, what have I become? <laughs> yeah, no, because I, I, I was I was definitely debating <laughs> making such a joke. Uh, I will write male. I will not write the other things. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death? We're still going with March 4th, 51. 40351. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Ten. Case number. Is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. 11 evidence of treatment. None, at least not after the initial examination. What exactly is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. Mm. Yeah, I'm not so sure. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest as if in preparation. Right, because I mean, the kid was. The post mortem. The kid was throwing rocks at him. And... Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. Okay, I'm turning the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. Okay, external examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. 
Let's see. He turns the body onto its side to check the underwear label. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrudin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Write it down. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. Mm, I'm not gonna steal the... No. I mean, I do <laughs> no. need... I do need shoes, but like... Also, they're probably valuable. Alright, I will omit the I'm not telling. Listen, I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> I'm I know. Just, I'm just one of these... Uh, imagine, imagine a line popping up in the dialogue thing every once in a while that says, devil on your shoulder. I love that you're the devil on my shoulder, sweetheart. I will omit the boots. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.100. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Well, I, I write that down. I guess I don't have any other option. Tattoos. He stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. Write it down. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. I write it down. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters, generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. The spine is bent more than the lieutenant compensated for. This buster's actual height is about 1.85. And no, you could not take him straight on. See, that's actually really something because there's not like you beat up Measurehead. Mm -hmm. Like you're the, the version of Harry Dubois that you built is a fighter is like is a slugger and for him to recognize yeah i this guy kicked my ass is is meaningful mm, yeah so my my thing here is th is the first option is it just trying to broach a topic with him or is it does it feel more like correct like I'm gonna go with the first one rather than just quietly writing it down, but I worry that it's gonna be more confrontational than I want it to be. Okay. Because this character makes everything confrontational. <laughs> I'm gonna write 1.85 meters, Lieutenant. Of course, I undercompensated. Oh, right. cool. Five XP for asserting yourself. Write it down. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. I'll just write it down. Short, light brown, male pattern baldness. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? <laughs> velocity was fucking max. Can we not arrest him for interfering with evidence or talking shit about Kuno's velocity? In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. <laughs> uh, I write down, I do not have meant for high velocity. Ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. While the, uh, with the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. And I feel like, um, 
I feel like we basically identified that that was the case even while it was still up on the tree, right? Yeah. It's kind of surprising to me that he even tried. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. May I try? It's no use. We should get chain cutters. You can try with them. I have a pair in the toolbox of my kinema. Well, let's go get them. Damn corpse. We had a good rhythm going. The lieutenant gets up and brushes his pants. Okay, well, yeah, we'll go get the uh, chain cutters. So this... I, I find that sequence so far to be really interesting because... You know, there are some key points where we are making decisions, but mostly it's just write it down, write it down, write it down. And it really mm -hmm. across like the repetition of that and having us experience that. Um, I, I, I think that was good. <laughs> Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. That's the kind of deep commentary you get from me on this <laughs> Let's Play series. Pull out the pull out toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools okay, inside are neatly organized. Handled chain cut. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. Okay, I push in the pull out, pull -out toolbox, toolbox, slides back, and close the door. And I make sure that I, um... There you go. Way, way to take some narrative agency there. The meanest oh. looking pair of cutters you have ever seen. They, okay, can I level up yet? You do have a skill point. I have a skill point. Okay. I'm going to increase my volition. Because I need that in order to ask for money. <laughs> okay. Did you notice? What? Look what did your, I not notice? Look at your your bar over there on the left side. Oh, my morale went. Oh, when I upload up the psyche thing, I the volition okay. volition is the the stat right? that sets your maximum. Yeah. The rotting man lies on. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Okay, external examination. Now that we have the chain cutters, let's cut the belt. Mm -hmm. Cut with as much precision as you can, please. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. All right, I mean, you're pretty okay. good at physical instrument. It's a red check, though. It can't be retried, so so far, so well, far. Okay, don't screw it up. After some deliberation. You sink the cutters into the knot, tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Press down. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. The lieutenant has kneeled closer, running his finger along the dark red groove, until there's a gap. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, mm. pulling up. Oh, sweetie, are you okay? Yeah, you know I'm a little squeamish about something. <laughs> yeah. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. <coughs> Write it down. Chest is intact. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia... He pulls down the man's underpants. Oh, what is Kuno going to say? No! <laughs> Let's get out of and see! I fucking knew it! Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. I mean, I'm 
I'm given an see. This is the thing is that I would usually just write it down, uh -huh. but I, I'm I'm now given an option to interact and express agency, so I'm going to do it. And so, by, listen, either think, one is expressing agency. That's true, but by giving me the same option over and again, and then giving me a different one, it makes that different one like more, I feel the pull of it more. You know. I think I think you that's feel you feel the pull of the genitalia. I mean, let, let's be honest, sweetheart. We've we, we've been dating for a couple of years now. You know me. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are oh. uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. I didn't think about this until you were about to click about how this might actually be a really bad idea for you. I apologize. I mean, I've seen worse. <laughs> you should touch it. Mm. <laughs> Electrochemistry. No. no, no. That's, I'm not doing that with the corpse. Look, look directly at Kuno and touch it. <laughs> Write it down and move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. Bullets have bitten little pieces out of him. It must have been excruciating, especially the hip. Before you is a temple of pain that knew little tenderness in life. Hmm. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Okay, this is me saying the most obvious thing we already know, but I'm I'm going to say it like in the most like this is the body of a soldier, a mercenary, in the most obvious voice. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here, battles, wars. You feel like that voice was the most obvious one to say it in? Yeah, I thought that was like okay. really all right. Okay, like G Kim. This guy may have been a soldier. Okay, I'm writing it down. Last item. Hands. He takes the man's right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other. Uh, let the lieutenant... No, I'll pick up the hand. See, I, I keep wanting to get involved in doing anything rather than just observing. I think this is a really smart way to design this. The hand feels heavy, filled with decay liquids. Like it's ready to explode if squeezed hard enough. You're suddenly repulsed. So much so you feel compelled to drop it. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Write it down. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? See, I, I really like that. He turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. So he buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. And they actually did muffle the next line. That's well done. Yeah. Uh, two, internal examination. Summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. <laughs> this, is, no. this is a conceptualization thing. This case could be your masterpiece, baby. No, I'm not going to uh, Okay, the that's yeah. extremely fine. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed. The lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it, gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black mm. and viscous. It's real good that we waited until right after we ate lunch to do this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, jack that fucker off! That's Jesus not even Christ. how that works! Jesus, that's... That's, that's, that's foul. That's... The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. 
Write it down. Respiratory system. Back hunched, as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. He's really doing it. The dead man's teeth cut into his gloved hands. Ugh. It's interesting that that's a physical... Uh, I do like the way, like, these kind of, of checks aren't just about my own physicality, but my my read on the physicality of others. I think that's really smart design. Yeah, the sort of, like, um, knowledge through empathy, empathy through experience kind of thing that we don't think anything of when it happens with, like, mental or emotional stuff. Um, yeah. And I actually really, you know, I really like the build that we have here that it has such a physical focus. Because as much as that goes against the way I would typically want to play a character or express myself through a character, um, as far as a character who doesn't have memory, being able to rely on these kind of physically intuitively thing, intuitive things is a good is a good character note and a good a good I keep expecting shivers to show up you know <laughs> yeah thank All you cavity shows no lesions oh, sorry the victim has received a dental implant possibly after a combat wound mouth swollen hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and oh. I was just gonna say thank you for allowing me to like bend the experiment uh, to the degree that you did oh yeah well you know the thing is I I want I want this to be my first, my first and foremost thing is I want this to be good for your channel because I care about you and your your work, and I want it to be a useful thing. And I, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will look inside the dead man's mouth. I'm going to re now, me personally, Amabelle. I'm going to regret it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm gonna click on it. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like throwing up. Straight in that mouth. Oh, God. No, you don't. You can keep it in. You can keep anything in. It is a non-trivial concern for some characters. Uh, I will look deeper inside. You manage to suppress the contractions trying to enter your stomach. All it takes is concentration. Through it, you see nothing but darkness. More meat and darkness. Deep silence as always. Hmm. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. The lieutenant repeats impatiently. He lets go of the jaws. The mouth snaps shut before you. I write it down. Hepatobiliary. N.A. He wipes his brow. Uh, right in A. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around, to the ground... The pool of feces there. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. He touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen. Briefly. I'll write down and omit the fall, 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 viola. Voila. I, I, okay. I, I, only, I can barely speak English. <laughs> What's next on the list? Description of injuries summary. Let's see. We have... Bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. Okay, bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Write it down. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Opinion, fatal energy, or non-fatal post-mortem? Uh, I'll... Non-fatal non -fatal, non post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. 
The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Not what, do you, fatal. what do you think? Are you gonna try to get? Are you gonna try to put Kuno away for all this? No, a non-fatal postmortem. Right. Next. Ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Interesting that uh, there are some words in the text there that were not in the do the voiceover. Yeah. What was that about no chlorine around the neck? You'd be chlorine for your life. Non-fatal post-mortem. Hmm. The lieutenant falls silent abruptly. A column of cold air encircles you, rising slowly upward in the shape of a courtyard, bordered by cracked plaster, windows, seagulls perched, on air conditioning units. A small green enclosure in the middle of a corral of tenements, capeside apartments, whirling in rags and the fortress wall of Terminal B. Above it, a thin blanket of coastal stratus clouds. I, before I quit continue, I really like, you know what, no, I'll, 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 I'll come back to it after. Okay. Higher yet, coalition airships guard over the 21 cordons of the zone of control. The air is crisscrossed with radio transmissions. The hair on your neck rises. I rub my sides and close my eyes. Why do you say that? I'm serious. I don't think this is what this I don't think this was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? <laughs> Why didn't he claw out his neck when they hanged him? And why did they not tie his hands? A big man like this is dangerous. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrists. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right. There should be signs of struggle. Let's leave the cause of death empty for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. That was a pretty big chunk of XP there. Uh, first, how did it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Oh, yeah. Well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? No. If you, if you bring that up to Kim right now, the look he is going to give you. What now? Give him back his notebook. Now? Now we put him in a body bag and I drive him to Forborg for processing. The lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. Okay, I'm going to do the Inland Empire check again. Yeah. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Oh, oh, wow, okay. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. Hmm. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes, either. Not when I tell them. <laughs> uh, 
Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. Mm. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you? It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoni. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Corporuni Rooney. This is getting up big now. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed me? Love did me in Provocopo. It was love all along. Which was it that killed you then? Love or communism? Huh? You said love killed you, but when you fell down, you said it was communism. You're misquoting me, Rooney. I said communism killed me. Love did me in. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Uh, I'm gonna go with the third option. Because it, it, it feels the most in keeping with, like, I don't know, the grasping, the intuitive, shivering. Yeah, sort of the tone yeah. of the moment here. Maybe this will lead to something. Something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous. <laughs> the clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Mm. Yeah, myself in the bathroom here. There you go. Look at that bright kid. We're birds of a feather, you and I. Soon you will be just like me. Just keep drinking and having a good time. It's a matter of weeks. Feeling nausea? Vomiting? Tenderness or pain around the liver area? Tiny red lines on the skin above waist level? More like days, Coppo. The clock is ticking. Your liver tells you so. Hmm. Enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Wow. Okay, so that's quite different than the, um... Yeah, really different and a lot more menacing. And I think, like... I think there's something about the fact that the spoken dialogue isn't the text that actually like really adds to the creepiness of it. Could you do us a favor and read the spoken dialogue that sorry the text for people who might be watching this a second monitor content? <laughs> sure. You can come back and oh, hold on. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality. Kapolopo. Uh, and I will try the legendary. Ch I can't imagine I'm going to do it. But I mean, you hit you hit the boxcars on the on the shot to get him down. Why not? 
you run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs, maybe you should be more thorough. Ah, uh, look in his pants again. The genitals in his breeches continue to be unnoteworthy. You see the penis of a dead man. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture. Can't get enough of that dick. <sighs> Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yeah, so something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Gart at the Whirling in Rags and the Fritz store down at the gates. If they don't know, but only if all else fails. If they... Fuck are you looking at being old man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Wanna get fucked? Yeah, the pe for the second monitor people, the piece of information that is elided there is that it, Kim said if they don't know, and then he looked over at Kuno. Hmm. Only if all else fails. Let's hurry then and leave. Mm -hmm. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, whatever we are looking for will become harder to find. Okay, well, I'm okay. Say so is and it's there. worth and it's worth noting, uh, you did just spend over an hour of in-game time. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ask for money. <laughs> okay, you got your priorities. Well, before I talk to guard, oh, I meant damn it. Before I talk to guard, I'm gonna um. Wait, was she here? Where was she? No, she's up. Uh, I'm sorry, I get so mixed up. So what I was going to say is that, um, you know, that was obviously very vivid and disgusting. Mm-hmm, I agree. And um, I think by having the body be out for a week, it really gets across, like, the horror of it in a way that, like, a fresh body might not. Yeah, you know, like, it's, I, it's interesting that they... Um... They picked a method of death that produces particularly gross bodies. A hanging victim is really unpleasant to be around. But yeah. then they also kind of soft pedal it on the um, on the leaving the body out thing because it has been below freezing and like the body's not in good shape. But ordinarily, a body that's been out for a week would be in worse. And especially if this was like a hot, humid environment. Yeah, um, definitely, you know, because I've been around, I've been around a few dead bodies, yeah. and I was present for, like, a particularly gruesome um, death with a lot of uh, fluids and whatnot, and it reminded me quite vividly of that, mm -hmm. in a way that just examining a body that was dead, but hadn't been starting to decompose. Uh, wouldn't have been. You came to ask her for money. You're back. Good. Before you can do I this, you before you do this, can I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah. Why is it not okay to take money from Everard, but it is okay to take money from Joyce? Because you had an immediate aversion to Everett and his big fake oh, check. Oh, the, the, well, first of all, because it's a big fake check. And secondly, um, more importantly, that was me trying to uh, establish... Dominance is the wrong word. But, like, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't... Like, very clearly from the start, he, he was on... on I was on the, on the back foot with him. Right, right, and right. And so I didn't want to get further on the back foot with him. Does that make sense? Like, it gives him leverage over you. Yeah. And, like, this would also... And this... Give, I mean, this would do the same, but, like, she's not immediately putting me in that kind of back foot position. 
I, 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 I have not yet died three times talking to her. You know? Also, she's closer. She's easier to get to than, than ever. Can I have some money? Voila, you're doing it. Really put your back into it. Yell it from the top of your lungs. <laughs> I mean, you have a yell it from the top of your lungs. It's available. Ah. Uh. I'll start with you seem rich. Can I have some money? <laughs> Why, yes, I am rich. How much money do you need? Hopefully not too much. I couldn't bring all of it with me. Because this is obviously is not how it works in real life. She's surprisingly nonchalant uh... about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on? You're saying this is not how it works in real life, but uh, actually, in my experience... When the police say to the rich people, we need some money, the rich people do say how high. Oh, did, did he tell me how much I owed? Yeah. How much did he tell me? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it was it was 130, but you managed to get it knocked down to 100 by being pathetic, I believe. Okay, I need 100 real. That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. She reaches into her raincoat and pulls out a zip bag. In it, you see paper notes arranged like black gills. All right. Can she you... removes a few notes and hands them to you. The paper is cold and oily to the touch. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. Ah. Uh... I'm still getting my head around this whole money concept. You're just helping me out. That's very charming. Uh, you're right, ma'am. That donations are permitted under the Emergency Act, and seemly as it may be, as long as they are properly logged with a precinct. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? Uh, okay, by the way, I've talked to Everard Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally, time to choose sides. <laughs> Physical instrument can't handle all this fucking murkiness. Uh, it's not important if I liked him, I was doing my job. He has a terrible taste in chairs. So. Of course, detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. The RCM does not pick sides in this. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Tell her she'll like you for it. Um, electrochemistry, calm down. Uh, I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go pay my bill and. Okay. Ask about a fridge. All right. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Uh, thank you. That's all for now. Okay. Uh, how are we, so we spent about an hour of game time doing the autopsy. How long did we spend? Uh, in... We we got a few minutes left here. Okay. So. Let's head back over. And where okay. is the entrance? Well, the 
feels so. It, we actually did like three things this episode. We're about to do like a fourth. So that, that feels, <laughs> um, you know, really, really moving along. Still don't really have any leads though. Can I help you? Uh, so about that money I owe. Yes. Have you got it? I have your money. Well. <laughs> Here it is. Sorry for the trouble. What, will you say something? Here? I was going to say, yeah, there's the three slightly different tones here. <laughs> Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. It's good you paid before 9pm, or your door would have been locked electronically. He taps his foot against a metal box installed in the, uh, in the back of the bar counter. Yeah, we're actually uh, quite close. Please pay for each night in advance, starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. Oh, oh no. I'll take a room here, too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? I seem to be in need of a fridge. Yes, yes. For the dead body. You want to put a dead corpse into my fridge, right? Yeah, that's about the gist of it. Well, I have a fridge... And you're not putting it here. <laughs> Why? Because this is a culinary establishment, not a morgue. I can't believe you even asked me. Oh, come on. You can believe it a little bit. It would only be for him. Lieutenant, you too? You're asking too? No. The answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. <sighs> Let's go talk to the Frit clerk. Okay, I've seen something here at the Whirling Guard. Something I need to talk about. What thing? Uh, I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even men on strike. Uh, hold your peace, best not to nitpick. Was there something else? Because I have coasters to stack and glasses to clean. Apparently, that's what I do now. Uh, there's something else I want to ask about. What? Hmm. You feel like you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Thank you, tutorial text. Ah. Uh... Gart, I saw another thing at the world. Another thing. Great. I love those. Oh, okay, now. Yes. Okay, uh, the, 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 the freak was the thing Kim just said. Mm hmm. Alright. Okay. Uh, where is that again? Is that over here? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Do you have a fridge? Mm-hmm. Right behind you. She nods toward the buzzing machine in the corner. I need to store a corpse there. Um, you're joking, right? No, I'm not joking. I need to store the corpse of the hanged man in your fridge. Um, okay. It wouldn't even fit, you know. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe a glass door fridge <laughs> in a public grocery store isn't the best option for storing a corpse. He is a big dude. Pity. It would have been so beautiful. Yeah, I don't know. This is what I'm saying. This, 
<laughs> this case can yet be your masterpiece. Yes. Okay, so nothing to ask him about the... Of the so where else can we... Okay, I did that. Well, I still need to do that. Um... Fridge victim's body. Ask around about fridge. I guess I'm asking Kuno. This is this is my nightmare. Well, like Kim said, if all else fails, and it does seem to have. Frankly, I don't know how someone as level-headed as Kim thought that Freet thing was going to be a good idea in any case. You know. You know how much he cares. Kuno, I need a fridge to stash the body. For the fuck, Imp? Good thing you asked the Kunmeister. Mm. Kuno knows a fridge. Perfect for freezing f You know, I, I might hate the Kunmeister more than I hate the slurs. <laughs> it's pretty bad, yeah. I thought you would. Where is it? Bacon man's in a rush. But what's in it for the Kuno? What's the return on Kuno's investment? Don't fuck it up. You need a fridge. Okay, rhetoric is not a thing you're spectacular at. Uh... No, um... You better... You, better, uh, you do have a skill point, that's true. A little better. It is. I mean, I think that's quite a bit better. And if not, I'll try one of these. I guess. Well, I maybe. think like the fact that the fact that that's third on the list. Okay, let me suggest try. that you you could perhaps do some of this other stuff and and maybe affect it in some way. Yeah, a corpse free yard. Don't you have civic pride? Kuno's got everything Kuno needs. All civics and shit. We can't buy Kuno, pig. Kuno's already got everything. Kind sir, I'll repay, I'll repay you for this information one day. Right now, the clock is ticking. Kuno's clock's not doing shit. Kuno's got a fuckload of time. Don't believe him, Kuno. He just wants to use your fridge. All right. Oh, <laughs> I made it worse. You made it better and also made it worse. Well, here we go. Okay. By killing in his territory, <laughs> someone has openly challenged Tuna. It's in his best interest to put them in their place. Some arrogant shit thinks he can kill in the Kuno's kingdom without asking the Kuno first. That sounds like lawlessness to me. A dark flame smolders in Kuno's eyes <laughs> as he ponders the <laughs> argument. Witness. <laughs> Like kings do. <laughs> You're really enjoying this. I just picture this little shit's face <laughs> with this description. It's just. It's really funny. This outlaw's fate is in your hands. Let's make an example of him. Help me locate him. Using fridge body technology. All right, Kuno, where's ya? See that shit house over there? He points to the collapsed building with the bookstore. A cold comes over you as you glance behind him at the crumbling colossus there, casting a shadow on you. Yes, I see it, the big tall one behind you. You gotta get in that shit? In there deep? What do you mean, in there deep? Check the fucking basement, pig. Don't you know anything? <sighs> Always check the fucking basement, recon style. I appreciate that he did a vocalization of rolling his eyes. Yeah. There's a giant fridge down there. Fucking will fit, no problem. It looks like a white bear or some shit. Try not to piss yourself when you see it. How do I get in the building again? Through the bookstore. 
You gotta beg the book bitch. Used to be you could get in there through the doorbell, jam that shit. Book bitch changed that. Kuno doesn't beg, so Kuno doesn't go there anymore. Beg the book bitch? Which sounds like a thing I would do, like, on, on my Tinder profile. Yeah, um, book bitch, beggar, you stupid or something. He means the bookstore. We have to ask the proprietor of the bookstore. <laughs> Thanks yes, for the translation, yeah. Kim. See, the cloud gets it. Listen to your four-eyed friend. Thanks, Kuno. You didn't hear it from Kuno, pig. But don't forget where you heard it from. <laughs> That's a complicated order. You now, pig. You're Kuno's property. I will, I, I will figure this out eventually. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Great. <laughs> what, 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 a, what a charming interaction, as always. All right, so <laughs> just, just, just for your information, by the way. Um. So maybe we know where there's a fridge then. Maybe, providing he didn't make that up and you can actually get access to it and so on. I think this is probably the place where we need to call it, though, uh, for the, for today. So that's going to be it for us for now. Thank you all so much for watching. You know, it was a productive episode. A lot of things got done here, even if most of them were pretty gross. When you come back next time, unfortunately, we are not quite done spending all of our time in the close quarters uh, with this with this decayed corpse. But maybe someday. Just imagine it. And we'll yeah. see you then.